Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. Let us pray. Merciful God. Your Your Son son was lifted up on the cross cross to draw draw all people to himself. Grant that that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him, Jesus Christ our our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, now now and and forever. forever. Amen. The psalm is Psalm 88. Uh, We'll read it responsively. O Lord, God of my salvation, when at night I cry out in your presence, for my soul is full of troubles and my life draws near to Sheol. Like those forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all your waves. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call on you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do the shades rise up to praise you? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Are your wonders known in the darkness or your saving? But I, O Lord, cry out to you. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. O Lord, why do you cast me off? Why do you hide your face from me? Wretched and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread has almost destroyed me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbor to shun me. My companions are in darkness.
Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Alex. Uh, it's a joy to welcome you to Prince of Peace on uh, this Good Friday. Uh, we are about to enter into what we call the seven last words of Christ, an opportunity to hear some of Jesus' uh, very special words spoken on that cross as he has been journeying, as we know, from the garden uh, to his trial. And now here we find Jesus in these last moments uh, speaking words of forgiveness and love and compassion uh, right up to his very death. We begin with the seven last words of Christ. The first word, Luke 23, 33 to 34. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus, there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. We were told just yesterday, Jesus says to love one another as I have loved you. Yet we see in that first reading that Jesus offers forgiveness in that moment of terror. So many times we've been told as children, you have to forgive. Say it. Say it to your friend. Say it to your sibling. Say it to your enemy. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And yet, sometimes we say, you don't understand how hard it is to say those words. But when we look at these scriptures today, we see Jesus on a cross, surrounded by hate and turmoil, looking to the heavens and saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Our second word. Luke 23, 39 to 43. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Stay. 
Jesus is surrounded by all these people saying, if you are the Messiah, if you are truly king, do this, do that. And now, with no friends around, with nobody giving him any love or support, hanging on a cross, even those who are condemned to death with them have turned on him, saying, if you are really this Jesus, then save yourself, but also save us too. And in the most unlikely of places, Jesus has one friend in the crowd. It's the other criminal who goes after his fellow criminal saying, shush, this is not the time nor the place. We are not men deserving of anything more than what we are experiencing right now. And in that moment, he looks at Jesus, and I can only see with apology in his voice, saying, if there's any way, Jesus, just remember me because... I don't think anyone else will. And then Jesus makes that promise. Not only do I remember you, I will see you soon. And where? In paradise. The third word. John 19, 25 to 27. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour... The disciple took her into his own home. I spent a lot of the last couple of years explaining my family uh, where I've been living. I say things like my aunt and my uncle, and then I say my aunt because my mom and her best friend married brothers. So my mom's best friend is now my aunt, but it's not like that. And and their grandchild is my godson, and that's been my most important family these last couple years, the four of us uh, living in a house we never expected to share for such a long time. And today as we hear Jesus re-scripting his own family, giving his mother to his friend and giving his friend to his mother, we see that the family of God does not start or stop within the bloodlines that have been so defined in our world, but instead Jesus' family is about those who can and will care for each other 
even in the most painful and harshest moments of this world. The fourth word. Matthew 27, 45 to 46. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some might see Jesus on a cross having a nervous breakdown. He's left alone and in this moment screams out to God, his holy parent, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Does he really believe that God has left him alone? Or is it maybe that he's finally hit his limit in the crowds of people yelling and taunting him in the midst of pure darkness as the clouds cover him and in the midst of the brutal pains that run through his body, does he scream out, I feel like I'm alone? Something that I believe each and every one of us can relate to. And whether it be in the pains of death or the pains of healing or just a day that feels like everything is going against us. The permission in this reading today is that you're allowed to feel forsaken, but also in this reading as Jesus sits on that cross, we're reminded the answer is we've never been left truly alone. The fifth word. John 19, 28 to 29. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. Blood is 
We see Jesus' humanity. Jesus is thirsty. I remember being with people uh, when I used to work in hospice. And even in those last moments of death, people would most be excited for even the littlest taste of water or juice. So when we see that Jesus is given this wine, they call it sour wine. Is it hospitality? Is it to mock Jesus one last time and give him this bitter drink to this king? We don't know, but we do know that just before going to this cross, Jesus made a promise to each and every one of us that when we take the wine, after taking the bread, that we're reminded, this is my blood given for you. This is a new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. So even as that wine touches his lips, hopefully we are reminded, as he is reminded, of the promises made and the gift and even the littlest sip of wine. The sixth word. John 19.30 When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. When I was a kid, I used to think that it is finished was Jesus telling us that the play was over. I thought that it was Jesus saying, I'm done. I'm done doing this. 
And I thought that for a very, very long time until I was in college. And then I saw the movie Chronicles of Narnia. And in this final scene, there is a battle. And people are fighting and fighting and fighting. And if you know the Chronicles of Narnia, there's these four kids who are thrust into battle and leadership uh, by this lion who many see as an image of Jesus Christ. And as they are fighting and it looks like they are losing and fear is taking over, this lion thought dead emerges and brings with him victory and new life. In the movie, one of the boys is fighting and fighting and fighting, and across the battlefield, the lion and him catch eyes as the enemy retreats, and he says, without any more than the assurance needed, it is finished. And you see this young man finally lay down his sword and you see his fear and his frustration and his worry disappear. Ever since that day, when I hear the words, it is finished, I hear a message of assurance to each and every one of us that the worry and the fear and the fight that is demanded sometimes to live in this world and to follow Jesus is not the thing that has power over us. For it's here that I see Jesus say, it is finished, and I bring you new life and freedom for all. The seventh and final word. Luke 23, 44 to 46. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two then Jesus crying with a loud voice said father into your hands I commend my spirit having said this he breathed his last
God gives his spirit to Jesus and Jesus comes to us and lives amongst us and here on the cross the final word in Luke Jesus says father I give my spirit back but we know that's not the end we know that the promise of the spirit is all throughout the scriptures and especially in Luke the gospel that then is the prequel to Acts The Acts of the Apostles begins with Pentecost, where that same spirit that seems to have run off in our message today comes back into each of the disciples and girds them forward into the world, sharing God's perfect message of love and grace and mercy. That spirit that Jesus commends to the Father has been commended to us even now. We continue with our bidding prayer. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for Elizabeth and Katharina our bishops, for Alex, our pastor, for Kathy and Carol, and all the servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, other ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church, and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. Give them new birth as your children, and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith, and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham in your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world 
and in the lives of Christians and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pay, pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord. And we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you.